that's not going to show Oh, dear. Pair of lines. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, okay. No, that's not low enough, but then the head on that thing is huge. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so in music, in music there's actually a lot of math, and that's why I, what? It doesn't even show up on the thing. It, you need a darker pen. It doesn't even show up on it. Yeah, it's not going to be worth it. Does this work? Yeah, that works better. Much better. <laughs> okay, so maybe you've heard of how music can help raise people's math scores on uh, different tests and things like that. Well, let's take an interesting look into where math and music come in hand in hand. Easiest one to look at is you'll often see a tempo written at the top of a piece, and that just tells you how many beats per minute there is in a piece, so just how fast it's going to go. And those are obviously numbers. I'll make this an easier number. If it's 120 beats per minute, that would be two beats every second. So, mm -hmm. uh, Very easy math there. Then you have different durations, such as a whole note, which is four beats, and then proceeding exponentially smaller and smaller to half note and quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth note. I don't want to do a, anything else. Uh, eventually down to a hemi demi semi quaver, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And again, exponential decay you're seeing in there. But those are the really easy things. Let's look at something that we don't actually necessarily think about when we're looking at listening to music. And that has to do with pitch. So, can someone tell me what 440 represents as notes? Uh, it's uh, the A above it's middle C. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Standard tuning pitch. Yep. Well, unless you're an orchestra. Or, yeah. or don't they have like 443 or something? There's some weird ones out there. Symphonies generally tune to A for the lines, but yeah. orchestra, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so if you have 440, question what's 880? Isn't that yeah. That's an octave above. That's an, yeah. Yeah. a high A. Anyway, what does this mean? That means every second there's 400 cycles, as you can recall from science. Sound is a wave of the air particles, or if you're underwater swimming, I guess it would be the water, but in most cases air, and it's hitting your eardrums at a rate of 440 cycles per second, so very small <laughs> amounts here. And like we said, when we double the frequency, get an octave. Why do we call it an octave? It's, we call it the same note, but it's basically higher, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a note like, and then basically the same note, it's just higher. And how is that? Because the wavelength is, sorry, the frequency is twice as big, which means the wavelength is going to be half as big. So it's going to be hitting in the same places, just it's going to do it twice before it gets there. Oops, I messed that up. Anyway, yeah, you get the point. If, yeah, if you got like three paired of wave, what is it? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm messing it up. But anyway, the point is that for every cycle, there's two of them, so it's hitting in the same places, but just alternating every other, every other time. So it's the same note. What about other chords, like say a fifth? Can you care to help me out here? Bum, ba, I know that's fourth. Bum, ba, bum, ba. That's fifth, yeah. So you have those notes that are they're so harmonious that they call them a perfect fifth because it's so freaking awesome. It's just clear, it resonates, it's beautiful. And the reason for that is that, let's say this is, um, sorry. I'm gonna go away from A for a bit and go to middle C. Middle C is at 262 hertz. And G is at 392. Anyway, the point is that these do not line up every cycle, but is it every second cycle of C, and every, every second cycle of C and every third cycle do line up. So these waves aren't going to be perfectly in whole number of amounts. 
but this is a ratio, we call it, of 3 to 2. And those low numbers make it for a very nice and pleasant um, interval. Same sort of thing as if you have a perfect fourth, which is a C and a F, right? Yes. C and F, you have a 4 to 3 ratio, which is, again, very close and very nice. Now comes the fun part. What if you have something that's, you go from something pretty like that, or to gross. We call that a tritone. It's right in between a fourth, yeah, fourth and a fifth. So it's this in between part. It's so close to being one and so close to being the other that it's just not right. It's like this continual wrong note. And the problem is, is that it's 40, a proportion of 45 to 32. Oh my gosh. To give you a perspective, let's focus on my calculator. I put it in earlier. For the camera, I'm not sure if you can see this very well. Let me know where you can, Nolan. Good? Okay. I'm going to go around. This is 36, sorry, was it? 45 versus 32. There's so much clash, and just it's oh ugly to look at. Yeah. So you can imagine just how bad it is that it sounds, because they don't match up at all. It just sounds gross. And that's where the pitch comes in. Another thing that makes something different from, say, um, a saxophone or a guitar or something, and this, <laughs> not very musical, no, because the frequency, natural frequencies of, say, a desk aren't terribly pleasing. But the, you know, the tendencies of a piece of wood or a, the right kind of metal actually come out much better. So those pleasing intervals come out better and less of the noisy ones. So math is hidden everywhere, especially in music, but I even if it's just messing up with your calculator to show people how ugly a tritone is. Um, <laughs> it's Hi, Russ. <laughs> I think that it's incredible that like, math can be found just anywhere in life. <laughs> That's all I got. Gonna keep doing it. Just gonna keep watching it. You can't stop now. I have a question about the 260 